I'm living in Akka, so it's in the north of Israel. And since morning, also we've been hearing the shelling and the uh, bombs coming, going out of uh, the country to uh, Lebanon. So we are in a war situation, although it all uh, seems to be in the international community um, talked about as if started on the 7th of October. And I have to say what happened in the attack uh, on civilians in the south of Israel uh, committed by Hamas, uh, uh, the way um, it was announced, uh, it was a uh, horrific uh, attack where uh, civilians, children, and uh, women and elderly people uh, were killed. 1,400 people were killed, Israeli citizens, and 240 uh, were kidnapped to Gaza. Those events were very horrific and very uh, uh, um, uh, uh, shocking, but I have to say it very clearly. As much as it was horrific and shocking, Nothing, nothing at all legitimized this crazy war that is uh, started two days later and is led by the most uh, uh, right-wing fascist government ever in Israel over the people of Gaza. And I'm, in the, uh, I'm insisting to say over the people of Gaza because actually when you have more than 11,000 civilians killed in Gaza, 75% of them are children and women. This is a war on the Gazan people. This is a war on Palestinian people in general. And nothing can legitimize the war crimes that are committed through this war. I have to say also that nothing before the 7th of October legitimized the, uh, what happened in the attack on the 7th of October. We believed always that there is no solution for the continuous occupation of Israel to the Palestinian people and land except a political agreement between the two people. And it was shown day after day for our regret that that's, uh, there is no militaristic action that can bring to a solution in this region. None of the two sides can commit, even a genocide will never end this uh, uh, situation. Without a political solution there, we will continue to suffer the people of the region, and mainly, mainly the Palestinian people, my people, from that occupation. I have to say that uh, uh, what happened on the 7th brought a lot of anger and shock and sadness to the Israeli society, and there were calls asking for revenge. The Israeli government, led by Mr. Netanyahu, took all of those feelings of rage, of, of uh, 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 need to revenge, and actually started a war that don't have anything to do with all of that. This is a war that was planned, it looks like, for a long time in the Israeli government. They only used the text of what happened in order to launch that war. Why I'm saying this? Because it was clear since the establishment of this government that Netanyahu and his coalition uh, uh, is leading towards ending and liquidating the right of the Palestinian people of uh, freedom. They were uh, acting very quickly in order to annexate more and more Palestinian land to Israel. And now they think that under the pretext of this war, they are able to accomplish and to implement those plans. The uh, uh, happening in Gaza actually an when 
declare from the beginning of the war that they have plans to move all the people, other, either they move to Sinai, Egypt, or to the south of, the, uh, uh, of Gaza, or they will be bombarded and will be uh, killed. This is an ethnic cleansing. What we are seeing today is a continuation of the Nakba in 1948. The, uh, 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 this ethnic cleansing is not only happening in, in Gaza. You have also to pay attention to what is happening in the uh, uh, West Bank also. Since the beginning of the war in one month or a little bit less, uh, there were more than 170 Palestinians killed either by the Israeli army or by the settlers who are uh, uh, supported and guided by the army. More than 15 small Bedouin localities were evacuated, were transferred uh, from the Jordan Valley and settlers took over their lands and their sheep. This is, uh, uh, we have to add that there are more than 3,000 Palestinians from the West Bank were arrested since the beginning of this war and added to the 6,000 uh, Palestinians who were arrested in Israel. We have to say that it's, uh, it's becoming more important for us to speak to you comrades uh, overseas or to speak to comrades and uh, peace activists in Europe because there is an action of silencing and terrorizing all of us who want and call for stopping this crazy war. Inside Israel, there is almost no possibility to organize one demonstration against the war. Two days ago, two of the Palestinian leaders, uh, uh, sorry, six of the Palestinian leaders, uh, citizens of Israel from the high follow-up committee, including the chair, Comrade Mohammed Baraki, were arrested on their way to hold a small protest saying stop the war. They were arrested, all of them former parliamentarians and leaders of different parties. They were arrested, interrogated. People, uh, uh, our comrades in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem tried to organize a demonstration. It was brutally, violently attacked by the police forces, and they were forbidden of holding any kind of demonstration. Since the beginning of the war, uh, the Israeli government and mainly the Israeli police led by the fascist Ben Gvir, the minister, is distributing weapons to civilians, of course Jewish civilians. Tens of thousands of uh, weapons are given to civilians under the, the claim of protecting uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, citizens of Israel, which are actually are uh, uh, groups of very right-wing fascist activists who are now weapons. They have their arms with them and they are willing to act any moment against anybody who raise any voice against this war. You have to, uh, I have, I'm, I'm saying we wanted and we looked for talking to you because the green light and the support that is given by uh, Biden administration, the United States of America administration to Israel has to stop. <clears throat> From the beginning, Biden said that Israel, Israel has the right to defend itself. And we are asking who will defend the Palestinian people who are slaughtered these days? Who is going to uh, uh, protect the Palestinian children? 
more than 5,000 of them has been killed now. And I think it's very important to say there is no double standards. Although in the beginning, it looks like Biden administration thought that they are able to protect their interests in the Middle East by joining Israel in this war, joining the Israeli government, sending aircraft, sending uh, uh, carriers of aircrafts to the Middle East. But I'm telling you, we are on the verge of a, a regional war if this continue further. We are afraid that that will bring into not even regional a war, but uh, uh, an international war because there will be forces like the United States of America forced to enter that war if it happens. And it's going to be a total uh, uh, disaster. We are calling upon you to continue your struggle to stop this war. For us now at this time, first of all, we need to call for stopping immediately this crazy war exchange of hostages and prisoners immediately, free the civilians and get them out of the cycle of violence from both sides. And third of all, to stop the harass harassment and violations of rights inside Israel for the Jewish and Arab forces who are struggling for peace and to end the war. And after all of that, we need to start to push for ending the occupation, ending the Israeli occupation over Palestine. We need to call for free Palestine from occupation and free the Israeli people from being an occupier. And that's the only solution that can bring security to all of us. Thank you very much.